name is Luis Anthony Ast. I'm the video math tutor. And welcome to Introduction to Algebra. Before we get started, please take the time to go over all the basic math videos that are on my website. They're all free, so do take your time. To do well in algebra, it's very important to have a very firm understanding of arithmetic. Also, I would like you to take the time to print up these notes and go over them before you actually go through this video. Okay, with that said, let's get started. Algebra is the area of mathematics that generalizes the concepts and rules of arithmetic using symbols to represent numbers. The symbols used are call variables and constants. Here's some examples of symbols that are used in algebra. They could be either letters from the English alphabet, like the X, the A, E, or Z, or they could be letters from other alphabets, mostly the Greek, but they can be from others. Theta and pi are typical examples. A variable is a symbol that can represent a value that is not known, or a symbol that can take on different values from a given set of values. Traditionally, the symbols most often used to represent variables are the lowercase letters at the end of the alphabet. So the S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z are the most typical ones we use. The letter X, by far, is the most commonly used variable. Contrary to what most students believe, it isn't evil. <laughs> it's just a variable. <laughs> Sorry. Any letter can be used to represent a variable. It really just depends on how it's being used in a problem. A constant is a number or symbol that represents a specific value. The value of pi is the most well-known mathematical constant. It really just represents the number of diameters that fit on the circumference of a circle. Letters can also be used to represent constants. Traditionally, they are either lowercase or uppercase letters at the beginning of the alphabet. A constant being added to a variable is traditionally written to the right of the variable. Here's some examples. The x the y and w are the variables. The 3, b, and pi represent the constants. A constant being multiplied by a variable is usually written to the left of the variable. Here's some examples. The 2, the 5, and the a are the constants. Z W and X are the variables. When multiplying constants times variables, don't use the time sign. Why? Well, it could be confused with the X variable. Instead, I recommend you use parentheses like this or a raised dot like this. Better still, just put the constant next to the variable like this. And this represents implied multiplication. To further illustrate our point, to take a look at this. We can have things that are okay are implied multiplication, the raised dot, or parentheses. Try to avoid things that look like this. Again, the time sign with the x's. Mm. The constant should not be to the right. It should be to the left traditionally when you're multiplying. And parentheses around just the constant it just doesn't look good. Traditionally, it's just not done. Since order matters for subtractions and divisions, variables may appear in any place. It just depends how they're being used in the problem. A coefficient is a constant that is multiplied to the left of a variable or series of variables. Now let's identify some coefficients. The first one, the coefficient would be just 2. 
for this, what would it be? Negative 5. Now this one's a little bit trickier. Hmm. Well, it's just a negative sign, but what about the number? Well, there's an implied 1. So this is really negative 1. And this one, I think, well, there's actually an implied 1 also. Well, yeah, but you can think of this actually as one fourth or quarter times W. So this one's a little bit tougher, but that is the answer. It's a fourth. An algebraic expression is any combination of variables and constants with mathematical operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, roots, and powers. Neither the equal sign nor any quality symbols are part of an expression. Here are some examples of algebraic expressions. As you can see, they're combinations of constants and variables with different mathematical operations. Now the following here are not algebraic expressions. Why? Well, the first one here has an equal sign, and the second one is an inequality. A term is any part of an expression that is separated by plus signs. For this example, I want to list the terms of this expression right here. What are they? Well, they're separated by plus signs. So the first one is just 3x squared. And when you list them, you separate them with commas. The second term is 5x. And the third one is just 7. Subtraction can always be rewritten as adding the opposite. So, for example, if you're given 8x cubed minus 4x minus 1, we can rewrite that as follows. 8x cubed plus a negative 4x plus a negative 1. So to list the terms, all we have to do is this. 8x cubed, negative 4x, negative 1. Like terms, or similar terms, are terms that have the same variables raised to the same powers, but may have different coefficients. Now let's take a look at some examples of what are like terms and what are not like terms. For the first one, 3x and negative 7x are like terms. Why? Well, they're the same variable raised to the same power. The coefficients may be different. For the next example, 8y squared, 2y squared, and negative 3y squared are all like terms. What about 5 and 1? Well, it turns out constants are considered like terms. Good to know. Here, looks a little more complicated. Ooh. But we have x cubed y to the fourth. This is also an x cubed y to the fourth. The coefficients are different. We have a 1 and 3 eighths. That's fine. So these are also considered like terms. Now let's look at 6w and 8y. Are they like terms? Well, no, because the variables are different. And over here, the variables are the same, but 1 is just 4x to the first power. This is 4x to the second power. It's x squared. Those are not considered like terms. And again, the coefficient being the same is just to try to trick you. But I'm sure you didn't fall for that, did you? And now it's time for our duh definition of the lesson. Terms that are not like terms are called unlike terms. Duh! See? Told you. Now let's identify all the like terms in the following algebraic expression. So with the 3y, there's nothing else that just has a y. Here's a y that's with an x squared. So, nope. No like terms there. How about here? 2x squared y, 3x squared y. Hey! And there's one at the end. So those are like terms. So let's list them. 2x squared y, 
3x squared y and negative x squared y. So here is our first set of like terms. Anything else? Hmm. Well, negative x, 7x. Aha! So I can list those. Anything else? Mm, there's a 4. We can think of that as negative 5. So, aha! So 4, negative 5. Constants are considered like terms. Anything else? Mm, no, we've pretty much covered all our bases. So here is our list of like terms. Before we formally combine like terms, let's talk about fruit. So if we have three apples, and I want to combine that with five apples, what do we get? Well, we just get eight apples. Easy, right? 